Welcome to Aging Insights. I'm Melissa Chalker, Deputy Director of the New Jersey Foundation for Aging. The Foundation's mission is to enable seniors to live with independence and dignity in their communities. Aging Insights is produced by the New Jersey Foundation for Aging to provide information and resources to boomers, seniors, and caregivers, the primary focus being to share important information and connect people to community-based programs. Today, we're going to talk about housing options. We often hear about aging in place and senior housing, but how do all these things happen? At the Foundation, we know that housing is the biggest expense for seniors because of the work we've done with the Elder Index. We also know that getting assistance with housing has been the biggest impact of economic security for older adults. We have two experts here with us today to tell us about housing programs right here in New Jersey, as well as unique models for aging in place. I'm joined today by Maria DiMaggio of the New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance Agency and Julie Dalton of Grammaton Village. Welcome to both of you, and thank you for thank taking you. time out of your schedules to be with us today. Um, I did want to start with you, Maria, yes. and talk a little bit about um, exactly what um, your agency is doing here in New Jersey. And for our viewers who might not be familiar with it, can you tell us what the House New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance Agency does? Yes. Um, we are a quasi-state agency um, that whose mission is to provide affordable housing and housing opportunities for the residents of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. We do this um, through the provision of first-time home mortgages mm -hmm. and also through funding of um, rehabilitation and and um, construction of new rental housing. Mm -hmm. So people might be familiar with knowing that you know there's help with lending and building yes. and things, but they might not know that specifically there are programs that are for the se for seniors as well. That um, HMFA for short, as, as your agency is called sometimes, um, that there are senior specific things. So you can talk a little. Can you talk a little bit about those uh, initiatives? Yeah. Yes. Back in 1988. Um, the Services for Independent Living program was established through a Robert Wood Johnson Foundation grant. The goal and mission of the program is to enhance the quality of life for residents in our senior financed buildings. Mm -hmm. um, we started out with 15 pilot programs and right now we're up to 93 buildings, 93 senior funded buildings and, and we serve approximately 10,500 residents each year. Wow. That's yeah. a lot of seniors. Yes. Yeah. Now, just to let you know, um, New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance Agency is t home to over 30,000 residents, or approximately 30,000 residents. But in mm -hmm. order to um, participate in the SIL program, or the Services for Independent Living program, mm -hmm. the owners of each building must agree and sign a participation agreement to come into the program. From there, um, the SIL program provides um, training, resources, and oversight to the on-site SIL coordinators um, mm -hmm. in terms of developing and bringing more programs and services into the building. Right. So just to recap for people, uh, New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance Agency uh, offers a lot of rental programs, but specifically for the senior buildings, if they're going to participate in the SIL, which is senior, or excuse me, <laughs> services, <laughs> services for, for independent, independent living, mm -hmm. um, they have to sign up for that specific, the owners of the building uh, have yes. to sign up so that their management is involved with your agency to yes. provide extra support and services for the seniors in the building, correct? Yes, that's so correct. So you mentioned the SIL coordinators who are uh, housed in those buildings and are a support for the for the seniors there. Can you tell us a little bit about their role and what things they might do for seniors yes. who live in those buildings? Um, we um, ask that minimum standards are, are followed in each of the SIL buildings mm -hmm. and coordinators must provide, well, well, first of all, there has to be an on-site service coordinator. Okay. That's not a requirement of um, New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance buildings or any senior buildings, mm -hmm. but if you're going to participate in the SIL program, there needs to be an on-site service coordinator. Okay. The on-site service coordinator or SIL coordinator um, is responsible for the provision of case management as needed mm -hmm. with a particular emphasis on the more frail elderly mm -hmm. to help them assist to age in place. Mm -hmm. um, and we, um, our coordinators also provide, bring more services in the building and also programs such as health and education programs mm -hmm. and health promotion programs. Mm -hmm. So some of the things they might do might be considered social or recreational things, but in addition, if there was a senior in the building who, say, needed help with getting nutrition services or uh, had a, a particular need through the case management angle, the, the SIL coordinator would be able to exactly. help them access other services outside of the building as That's well. That's exactly right. So kind of as a, a liaison to the social support 
support network outside of their building as yes. well and making sure they know about things like the SNAP program perhaps and exactly. how to apply for those things as yes. well. That's terrific. I mean, I think many people don't realize when we talk about, you know, people often hear about senior buildings and they think, okay, well, that's just a place where they've designated seniors can go there. But the, the Housing and Mortgage Finance Agency runs this specific program where seniors are in these buildings and they're also getting supportive services uh, in a way yes. through these SIL coordinators. And yes. it's very important, I think, to, to recognize the role of the on-site service coordinator in mm -hmm. general mm -hmm. in, in all buildings because mm -hmm. they do, um, studies have shown that um, having an on-site service coordinator enhances the quality of life mm -hmm. for residents. And also for seniors, it does um, promote goodwill throughout the building, mm -hmm. including with management staff. And also studies have shown that it decreases the amount of emergency admittances to hospitals. So we do know, and it's all common sense, mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. it's very important to, to have an on-site service coordinator in sure. a building. Sure, sure. Uh, and I want to make a point, too, that this on-site service coordinator that you keep mentioning, you know, this is not somebody who just, you know, appears at the building every day. This is someone who is a skilled individual and whom your agency also assist them in getting training opportunities yes. as well to make sure that they're up to date on the most recent um, things that are available for seniors in their community and the, and the most um, productive way to help seniors yes. as well, right? So and we do that. have requirements mm -hmm. um, in terms of attendance at mm -hmm. actually the New Jersey mm -hmm. Foundation for Aging Annual Conference. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have two workshops at the agency and then mm -hmm. there's also um, a networking meeting um, that coordinators come to. We also encourage if possible if time and budget permit mm -hmm. uh, that coordinators also um, do participate in other continuing education programs. Mm -hmm. Terrific. That's really great. Uh, and so, you know, we've talked a lot about these buildings and, and that they're there and that they have this support coordinator there for seniors, but um, our viewers might be wondering, well, how do I know where these buildings are? There, there was a list, I understand, of buildings. Is that yes. correct? Yes. And um, we do have a list of all of our senior buildings that, as well as all of our, our family mm -hmm. developments. Mm -hmm. and. Um, if viewers are interested, they can contact me directly by email at mm -hmm. mdimaggio at njhmfa.gov, and I'll be happy to send them the list. Terrific. Well, we'll put that up on the screen and make Great. sure people can see it and, and know how to uh, email you and get that list. Uh, but remind us, how many buildings are there that are, fall into that category? There, right now, we have 93 buildings. 93 buildings. That's terrific. So um, to get that list of 93 buildings, people can contact you yes. directly and get that. But I understand there's also a resource network of some sort that's available yes. through the agency? Um, um, the New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance Agency does oversee the New Jersey Housing Resource Center. Mm -hmm. um, that is a listing of developments. Um, it could be for families or seniors. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to access that um, information, the information is on our website, but there's a direct link, which is www.njhrc.gov. Um, and mm -hmm. that list can be very helpful because most of our buildings in general do not have vacancies. Mm -hmm. However, if, you're, if someone is looking for an apartment, um, landlords do contact the Housing Resource Center and the list is quite extensive and is updated fairly regularly. Mm -hmm. And does the list is by county and also by city if you, you mm -hmm. have a specific city in mind. Mm -hmm. It also provides you with information on rent and also whether the apartment is handicapped accessible. Right. So that resource is for someone who might be looking for housing, and if yes. they're unsure where to go, they could go to that link and look at, like you said, a specific county or even yes. town and find out if there's openings yes. uh, or resources in their area to help them find some place to live, yes. correct? Yes. Uh, and I, that reminds me in talking about that that we've talked about how many SIL buildings there are and that they have these coordinators, but are there any requirements for seniors to move into the building to be? Yes. We There is an age requirement. We mm -hmm. have designated senior buildings, and mm -hmm. that is um, designated at the time of the funding of the building, but our senior buildings are either 55 years old or 62 years old, and that, that's at the um, designation of the owner once the project is funded. Right. Um, there are also income requirements mm -hmm. um, because our housing is for low and moderate income individuals, so there are income requirements mm -hmm. and um, individuals then fill out an application to come into the building, and that's all reviewed not only by the on-site property management staff, but also approved by agency staff. Mm -hmm. 
And to, to find out about being eligible, they could visit the website and, yes. and learn all that information yes. there and figure out who they need to call to apply and exactly. all of that stuff. True. Well, we'll make sure that information is available um, in the credits for folks to be able to go back and, okay. and look you. that up. I really appreciate you being here, Maria, yes. to share Thank that you. information because I think it's an untapped resource. People don't know um, that those services are available yes. and that those buildings exist and, and that, you know, that they, it's not just one general label of senior housing, there are specific programs yes. and services attached to it. So thank you for sharing thank that. Uh, and Julie, thank you for joining us as well. We've talked about um, specific mm -hmm. buildings and supportive services in those buildings, mm -hmm. but um, you're involved in a very unique model called the village model that some people yes. might not be familiar with. So maybe you can give us a little history and background or where that village model came Certainly, from. Certainly, and, and I'm why delighted to that. be here today, and thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, about 15 or 16 years ago, a group of residents in the Beacon Hill neighborhood of Boston Boston. They knew that, that what they wanted, which mm -hmm. most people want, is mm -hmm. to stay in their homes and mm -hmm. in their community. And um, but they didn't really necessarily want to. They wanted to think outside the box, mm -hmm. and they wanted. They knew in the future they would need some type of support, perhaps, to stay there. Mm -hmm. So they started what they called a village, which is based on f uh, foundation of neighbor helping neighbor, mm -hmm. bringing services into the community, mm -hmm. really helping people stay in the community. So over the years. You know, this movement has really grown and different communities have taken on this challenge mm -hmm. of how do we support older residents to stay in their homes as they get older. Mm -hmm. So it really developed at a grassroot level for yes. these individuals who wanted to stay in their own neighborhood. And in, instead of, you know, each individually looking out for resources, they kind of helped each other and developed a network of resources exactly. that they could all use, right? And what they did is they, they decided to take some unconventional choices mm -hmm. because many times communities do have services, either mm -hmm. through the government or through a network of mm -hmm. social service agencies, sure. but many times they're only focused on one issue, whether right. it's housing, transportation, health care issues. Mm -hmm. So um, the residents that became called Beacon Hill Village mm -hmm. wanted a more holistic approach. So the village model is now really characterized by this holistic approach. Mm -hmm. What do people need to stay in the community? What really supports them in many ways beyond just the government services that might be available? Right, and so this really grew into a, a replica, replicable model yes, where people yes. now are doing this in, in other places. So uh, you're involved directly in uh, Gramaton Village, yes. as we said in the open of the show, which is a village model. Um, but before we explain sure. how your mm -hmm. village works, I know that you told me there are um, several different types of yes, of, yes, of models within yes. the village model. Since so. those early days in Boston, uh -huh. there's now what we call the the National Village Movement, okay. and there's 200 villages in existence throughout the country wow. with 40,000 members. Mm -hmm. There's another 150 in development. Mm -hmm. um, also, there's one in the Netherlands and Australia, so it's really a movement that's taken off. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think there, the most common model is what I would call a grassroots model, mm -hmm. which is just what Beacon Hill is, mm -hmm. which is what Gremiton Village is people in the community got together and said, we want this to happen for ourselves, mm -hmm. and they created um, their own village, their own mm -hmm. organization. Right. The majority of those across the country have a professional staff, but not always. Mm -hmm. The other models, um, there's what they call a hub and spoke, so that sometimes we see that in a larger urban area where there'll be what they call the hub, which would handle all the back office type of operations, mm -hmm. and then the spokes would probably exist in like different neighborhoods. Okay. There's also um, some villages that are supported by a parent organization. It could be a healthcare system. Mm -hmm. It could be a larger not-for-profit organization. So right. again, that parent organization mm -hmm. takes care of all those uh, organizational infrastructure expenses. Mm -hmm. And then the last model is a time bank model. So this one usually does not require a membership fee, but it's based on a time bank. So for example, I will take you to the grocery store and then you will teach me how to use my iPhone. So right. there, there's like a trade-off. like a trade-off. Trade yeah. yeah. So okay. those are the that four basic good. models of mm -hmm. the village model. Interesting. Again, the most prevalent is the grassroots mm -hmm. model. And you said that uh, Gramaton Village, which you're associated yes. with, is a grassroots model. So you could explain to us how, how it works at Gramaton. Certainly. And absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I have to tell a little story uh, to how we start. <laughs> We've been open since 2008, mm -hmm. but our founders, I kid you not, I love telling this story, <laughs> the idea came to them at the Geezer's Bridge. Club. They had been inspired by Beacon Hill Village, so they decided that if mm -hmm. Boston could do it, Bronxville can do it. So again, oh, and I'm the founding executive director. So uh, what Gremiton Village does is we really help people stay um, in the community mm -hmm. by offering support, 
resources, connection, and mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. We follow what they call a volunteer first model. Okay. So if someone needs something that what I call like an unskilled service, a mm -hmm. ride, run an errand, go mm -hmm. grocery shopping, we do that with a volunteer. Mm -hmm. But as we know, as people get older, they may have some type of a skilled need, whether mm -hmm. that's a plumber or an electrician or an elder care attorney or a mental health counselor, mm -hmm. then we have a very large network of what we call our community partners. Mm -hmm. So the village model is really about leveraging the existing community resources, not reinventing the wheel, but you know, making sure our members have what they need to stay mm -hmm. in the community and really being that connection for them and that voice for them. Right. Now you've, you've mentioned and you've called uh, the, the <laughs> individuals who participate at Gramerton members. And yes. you also mentioned in the description of the different types that some have a membership fee and some don't. Yes, so could yes. you explain to us the, the exactly. membership fee? The majority of villages in the village model do have a membership fee. So it, uh, and that's that, that organization sets their membership fee. Mm -hmm. At Gramerton Village, we have three levels of membership. Mm -hmm. One which we call a full membership, which is access to our volunteers, access to home assessments, individual consultations, um, all of our social and cultural and educational activities, mm -hmm. and access to our community partners. That's $400 a year for an individual, or $530 a year for a family or a household. Mm -hmm. We've had a mother and son be members. We've mm -hmm. had siblings be members. Mm -hmm. But we also have another level of membership, which we call a social membership, because mm -hmm. we understand that not everybody may need services right now. Mm -hmm. So that's $200 a year for an individual and $265 a year for a family. Mm -hmm. And again, that that membership entitles them to all the social and cultural events. We think it's perfect for a recent retiree, mm -hmm. maybe someone that's just moved into the community and mm -hmm. want to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. And then our third level of membership is what we call, um, it's a special membership, it's a scholarship program for mm -hmm. people of low and moderate income. Oh, okay. So we have funding from a local mm -hmm. uh, community fund that mm -hmm. subsidizes the membership. Mm -hmm. So if those people meet the income eligibility requirements, it's $50 a year for mm -hmm. an individual and $75 a year for a family. Right. Most of the villages do have some type of scholarship program. Mm -hmm. And I know at Gramerton Village, um, I and our founders were very um, you know, committed that all members of the community mm -hmm. be able to participate. Sure. So, you know, some communities, some people may find paying a membership fee difficult. Mm -hmm. So again, we do have this scholarship program. Right. And I think, you know, as I said in the open of the show about the expense of, of housing for seniors, uh, yes. you know, in New Jersey and, and in New York, yes, um, yes. it would be similar uh, concept. Um, you know, that idea of wanting to age in place, and if yes. they can't afford um, the services of participating in a village, then it really prices them out of being able to stay yes, where they want absolutely. to age in yes. place. And exactly. so that, I think, is an important piece of it. Um, but I do want to get back to how, how the village works now that we've talked about yes. the the yes. fee structure as well, um, because you know it's really interesting to me mm -hmm. that there are, is a breakdown when you have professional services involved, whether yes. it's the um, grassroots model or it's the model where there's mm -hmm. a um, nonprofit partner who's assisting with yes. those professional services. Because it's as simple as if I say wanted someone to take my trash cans out for me because it's getting more difficult for me, yes. I would call and a volunteer. You could set up a volunteer. We would have a volunteer who would do, do that. that. But if something broke in my house, if the plumbing, you know, if I had a plumbing issue, and rather than me opening the phone book, I can call and you've got a, a set yes. of vetted um, exactly. services where the individual could then have a, you know, say, well, we work with this plumber and we know that their yes. their work is good and their ethics, you know, you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna rob exactly. you or <laughs> at Gramerton Village to be in our community partner network, we mm -hmm. now have about two hundred and fifty organizations. Mm -hmm. You know, our job is to know who are the good providers out mm -hmm. there, sure. who are the um, services that someone may qualify for that they may not be aware of. Mm -hmm. You know, so yes, we have a very strict vetting process, but yes, anyone that goes into someone's home, mm -hmm. we have vetted, whether it's a plumber, whether it's a caregiver, whether mm -hmm. it's a home care agency. Right. So yes, mm -hmm. they have access to all of our community. Mm -hmm partners right. and our volunteers so we you know um, at Gramerton Village we determine is this need something that can be handled by a volunteer a mm -hmm. qualified volunteer or is it time for to bring in a professional right. to take care of the issue absolutely and so um, you've mentioned just now home care and when yes. we were talking and you described the difference between a volunteer and a skilled need you listed yes. things like plumber and electrician but also you have vetted home care agencies yes. in case people need in-home nursing or physical therapy or those sort of things absolutely right? we do mm -hmm. and again our job is to know what will someone qualify for mm -hmm. because again in many communities there are government services mm -hmm. 
but someone particularly might be in the middle class and may have their, an income over the threshold. Right. So our job is to know what services will they qualify mm -hmm. for. But yes, we, we determine if the person needs home care, do they have long-term care insurance perhaps, mm -hmm. can they pay privately, mm -hmm. um, have they accessed the government or the county services. But yes, we have a very large network. But always keeping our member in the driver's seat. We mm -hmm. like to say it's a little bit of a self-directed model. Sure. I'm not going to tell our members what to do, <laughs> but we encourage and support and we also give choices. Mm -hmm. So again, if they want someone to care for them in the home, I'm not going to just send them to one agency. Mm -hmm. I may introduce them to two agencies. Right. And then as you mentioned, again, once someone pays our membership fee, they do have access to our network. But obviously, if I refer them to a plumber, then any and, fee for the plumber right. is between them and and That's a, that's a and very good distinction yes, exactly. to make, yes. Uh, Whereas, what, what their membership fee is getting them is access to your exactly. list of services, but any additional yes. fees for services they have to pay Correct. for or when it yes. comes to home care if they have an insurance coverage exactly. or some sort that, that would cover that. Then or, that or they meet the in. county requirements. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I think that's a, a very good uh, distinction to make yes. when, we're, when we're talking about yeah. those things. Um, so in terms of, you know, you talked about the social and cultural things and that's yes. another because, you know, it's wonderful to have that ability to connect people to the community yes. resources in their area because yes. as we know, it's so hard to know what's out there. And so exactly. the idea that you can connect them, whether it's to the county or government services or to a local business um, that, yes. that they might need mm -hmm. to access is great. But it's also this idea of connecting with the people in your community. So could you describe to us some of the social or cultural activities that you do in order to keep that balance? Oh, certainly. Well, actually, today at Grammaton Village, we're having a dessert party <laughs> oh, in the wow. afternoon. So we have about 25 of our members are coming and bringing their favorite dessert. Oh, wow. So it's an opportunity to, you know, just meet new friends. We mm -hmm. have a book club. We go into New York City and go to museums. Um, we do luncheons. We do about mm -hmm. seven luncheons a year. Those are very popular. Mm -hmm. We have classes in memoir writing. We have a, an American literature class. We have a book club. Mm -hmm. We work with the local senior centers because, again, you know, yeah. an important distinction to make is mm -hmm. we're not what I would call a traditional senior center, Correct. which is a congregate site where people mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. We feel that's a great model. Mm -hmm. But it's, again, the village model is all about options and choices. So yeah. that model works for some people, and other people say, no, that's not me. Yeah. So they like this. It's sort of like an a la carte. I'm going to come to this event. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call you when I need you. <laughs> um, so again, we, we try to find, and we, we have a very strong program committee mm -hmm. who always uh, does surveys with our members to say, what would you like? Yeah. You know, what kind of programs would you like? Mm -hmm. So we have a men's group. Uh, we do a tea and conversation series every month. We do poetry readings. So whatever our members want. And then we've done um, some very successful, what I call local treasures tours. So the local churches have beautiful stained glass windows. There's wonderful libraries. So mm -hmm. sometimes we don't look to see what's in our own backyard. Yeah. And so people say, you know, I didn't know that, that this church down mm -hmm. Uh, the other side of town had such a great history. Thank right. you for bringing me together. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's the a great thing about yes. the village model is not just connecting people to services and programs that they yes, need, yes. but also that social connection and making sure people don't get isolated. Um, because what's one of the downsides of aging in place is sometimes if people decide to stay be. in their home, yes. they get isolated from the rest of their community. Right. Uh, and so being engaged in something like a village model is, is it helps great. them stay yeah. connected to the community as well. But as you said, I love that you say it's <laughs> options and choices because that's also not for everybody. Correct. Not everyone yes. wants to have a book exactly. club or go on yes. those things. Exactly. So, yes. so if they don't yes. want to, they can opt out of that thing. Or if, or if the village model in general is not for them, they right. don't want to be bothered. There we, are other things. We tell them, yes, you know, there's <laughs> other wonderful programs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you like? But again, we also, I think, many times fill in a gap. So right. there might be a wonderful transportation service, mm -hmm. but they may not take you to the beauty parlor. They may right. only take you to a doctor's appointment. Right. We will take a member to the beauty parlor, mm -hmm. to church, to the farmer's markets. Right. You know, so it's about so filling a gap. It's really yeah. about filling a gap. And how, how do we make life easier for mm -hmm. our members? That's terrific. Because I like to say our members are getting wiser. There you go. That's, I like that. Uh, so you've given us some great information about how a village model works, and people might be thinking, uh -huh. oh, there's 200 of them in the, across yes, the country. Yes. Where is one near me? How can they find that out? They can find that out by going to the uh, village uh, National Village Network, okay. and that website is www.vtvnetwork.org. Okay. They can click in. There's a village map, and they can do a search by zip code, by state, by 
town and they can find out where there's a village near them and they can call that village directly. Terrific. Yes. So they can access that online or make yes. a phone call and get all the information yes. about what's near them and how to join a village if exactly. they want to. Exactly, yes, yes. Well, I really want to thank you both again for being here with me today and describing all of this stuff to our viewers because mm -hmm. I really think it's a great resource to know what's available to be able to age in place and yes. stay in your community yes. in an affordable and safe safe way. So thank you both so much. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank all of you for sharing your time with us today as well. Aging Insights is produced by the New Jersey Foundation for Aging and is made possible by donations to the foundation. To become a sponsor for Aging Insights programs, please go to our website at www.njfoundationforaging.org or call us in the office at 609-421-0206. All of our previous shows may be viewed on our website. And we want to remind you to find out about senior services in your area. Please contact your county office on aging. Uh, their numbers are also on our website or you can call the state hotline at 1-877-222-3737. Thank you for watching this episode of Aging Insights and remember, aging is everyone's business.